Here we go. So a little bit different today. Not going to be not going to be preaching, giving you a week off. But instead, we've got three speakers today. You can woo. Three uh, ladies, very spiritual, very deep ladies, who are going to be sharing some thoughts with us today. So we thought we'd, we'd, um, we would um, do a Mother's Day panel. So, you know, obviously it'd be Mother's Day, we like to put extra stress on people, uh, centre attention. We've even got the video down here so you can see yourself, just make it more awkward for you, more embarrassing. Um, <laughs> no, it's not the case. Um, but we want to hear, we want to hear from some of the mothers in the church. And so we've got some questions. So we're going to go through some questions. We're also going to show some videos as well. We've got, um, we've got some video recordings of, of some of the children in the church who uh, wanted to say something about their mums as well. So we'll, we'll do a bit of both. I'll let you know. We'll, we'll, get, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see how we get on. So the first thing is really, really simple. Just, just tell us a bit about yourself, a bit about your family, your background, you know, um, how many kids you have, all, all, the, all the usual type of stuff, the personal stuff. Let us know a bit about who you are for those who don't know you very well. So why don't we start with Sarah and we'll go to Sheila and then Laura for this question. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Sarah Jenkinson. I'm married to James and we have Brad, Tash, Jasmine, Gabriella. Well done. No, I'm Jonah, just, just four. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we've just got those four. Uh, Brad and Tash are... one of the way! No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brad and Tasha are older and Jasmine and Gabriella are younger. Yeah, just a bit about me. Um, I've always been brought up in a Christian home. I've always gone to church with my grandma and granddad and my mum and dad. So I've always been in church. And then as I got a little bit later on in life, I fell away a little bit. But then I came back after my marriage broke down. And yeah, I'm in this church. Um, I head up the coffee shop. Uh, I'm part of the church through that. Um, I work, um, I'm a support worker for a company called Impact Living and um, I, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis I support vulnerable adults with various different needs and um, we're sort of helping them get back into the community and it's live an independent to, uh, life. to support Brad, hasn't it, as well, that? Well, this is the thing, you see. To make you know, him more independent. Bradley really helped me at, well, in my job today. I have to keep falling back on him, you know. <laughs> He was I'm your reference, kidding. really, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Nicola were like, you've got the job because of Brad. I went, fair enough. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's about All it. All right, Sheila, <laughs> tell us a bit about you. Hi, <clears throat> Sheila Hicks. Um, I have been a single parent for 30 years. So I have three boys uh, that are now 34, 32 and 30. So they're not here with us today. But when the boys left home... Um, I kind of felt like I needed some female company. So there were a couple of girls in the church that needed accommodation. Um, and one of them is here today. It's very exciting because she now lives in Sheffield. So Nicola is here with her little girl, Louisa. And if you really want to know what it's like to live with me, ask Nicola. Oh <laughs> So that was a great joy, having, having the two girls. And then, um, yes, um, the, boys, the boys now live in Sunderland, Stourbridge and Reading, so they're all quite a long way away. Okay, Laura? Yeah, I'm Laura. I'm married to Steve. Um, we've got three children, Lucas, Hamish and Asia. Um, I've been in and out of Grace Church for about 17 years now, almost half my life. Um, so I had a short time in Bradford where um, I moved over there for two years I think it was um, for work and a new church and um, then when I got married to Steve we moved to Liverpool for a year but um, to avoid Ada getting a Scouse accent we decided that um, we needed to come back to Sheffield and um, God <laughs> Uh, yeah, God uh, told us that we needed to move back here to um, help build Grace Church and uh, the community around. So that's why we're here. Yeah, and Steve literally builds Grace Church. <laughs> <wherever> he's gone. <laughs> he's one of the guys who does loads of stuff in the background over the building work side of things. Okay, so this is probably um, this is a nice question for you to answer. Um, 
What do you enjoy the most about being a mother? Are we going to do like like down the row every single time? Is that what we're going to do? You can just chip in whenever. Whatever. Okay. I, I think the most important thing about being a mum with kids that are working is that they pay rent every month. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> They've got to make their way in life, haven't they? <laughs> um, no, just kidding, joking aside. Actually, what's that? <laughs> they do pay, they do pay. We've even got Jasmine saving her pennies to pay us back. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's always a, you know, a pleasure to be a mum. And uh, for me, it's because obviously Brad and Tash are in their 20s, and then I've got Jasmine and Gabriella that are eight and five. It's a massive world apart from being a mum to older children than it is to younger children. So I thought, having Brad and Tash, that were it. I'm never going to have any more kids. So I saw my life. That was it. Freedom, holidays abroad every year. Obviously, and now God captivity <laughs> and stress and no holidays. <laughs> and then so it James was like, ruined your life. It did. Seriously, I was like, <laughs> life a luxury. And then obviously God had different plans and uh, we had Jasmine and Gabriella. And I can honestly say, you know, that the support that the older two have been to me as a mum, being an older mum with two kids, I've really been blessed with that. God has really, really sort of poured out his blessing because we've had loads of support from James's parents, my parents, and obviously Brad and Tash. And I think if they hadn't been around and been an older mum, I don't think I would have succeeded the way I have done. And it is an absolute pleasure. The house is always full of laughter and we're always laughing. You know, when the kids have gone to bed, then it's Brad and Tash that uh, want our attention or whatever. But yeah, I really, really love it. So, uh, <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just going to pick on your two. Who wants to go next? I've got some right stuff. <laughs> we'll mix it up. Um, I thought long and hard about this because all I've ever wanted to be is a mum. So growing up, my mum said to me, what do you want to be when you grow up? I just want to be a mum, that's like. So there isn't really anything that I don't like about being a mum other than the sleep deprivation. That's pretty hard going. Um, I think the biggest sort of pleasure is watching the kids grow and achieve new things. So Lucas, um, for those of you that don't know, has got autism and... Um, he was diagnosed with autism quite a while ago and we, I really fought against the enemy's plans for him. <laughs> and um, So we started off with Lucas at two with health visitors saying things like, he won't talk and he won't do this. And so standing in that faith that, no, God's planned his life. And um, seeing him now in mainstream school and worshipping Jesus and reading his Bible and doing all the stuff that normal kids do, if you like, just... You know, it just blows me away. And I think that's the I biggest thing. Hold on, I don't think normal kids read the Bible at that age. <laughs> <laughs> I think you said the bar too high there. <laughs> He's doing well. He's doing well. Yeah. Keep, so going. I think Keep on, crack on. Yeah, that's one of the biggest pleasures. You just see them grow and achieve things. And um, so obviously, Lucas and Hamish are both older, and Ada's just one. So it's different achievements that I'm seeing. But when she says a first word or that sort of thing, and obviously, the boy is doing things that we were told they wouldn't do. Um, just, God's just so faithful to answer your prayers in that. So when I told my youngest I was gonna be doing this, and one of the questions was this question, he said, you're gonna have to have a good memory, aren't you? Ooh! <laughs> like you stop being a parent when they leave home, I wish. But I have this, it's my prop. So if you can't read it, it says Fabulous Mummy. And, and I was given this by the middle and youngest, so Peter and Phil, when they were probably around seven or eight, when they first were old enough to go down to Clinton's with some pocket money and buy a Mother's Day present. So it's not hard to be reminded about how, what it's like to be a mother when you've got a trophy like this that you've kept all those years. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, now, now they're older, it's, it's that getting around the table. We've always been a family to get around the table. And the, they've now got the girlfriend, so it's more people around the table. And just, I love the banter. I could actually just sit there and watch them interacting 
and just get huge amounts of joy out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Can we, Kezi, can we show a couple, just, we'll show two videos that we've got prepared, thanks. Just pick one. I love my mum because she makes me yummy meals and she always makes me yummy meals. And It's Mother's Day and why do you love mummy? Uh, because what does mummy do at home to help you? Practice her words. She helps you practice your words. Now, I just want to say I know Sarah's been on a panel and it's supposed to be a, a, an example to everybody, but I, I do watch that and think Gabby was really struggling to think of something <laughs> to say <laughs> about my mum. <laughs> but, uh, yes, anyway. <laughs> so, um, this next question, this might take a bit of thinking. Um, if you could redo anything, so go back in time and do things differently with your kids, what, what would you change? on this one just to mix it it up I I had to think about this because because being a single parent obviously you're doing everything for everybody and I was acutely aware of the fact that I couldn't actually spend as much time with them as I wanted to and that is my biggest regret and you know you see those those um video clips don't you of of people saying you're never going to wish when you think about your life that you spent more time at work And I think, obviously I didn't choose, well I didn't, just for the record, choose to be a single parent. Um, um, But just having more time, maybe managing my time better so that when they came home from school I had time with them. I'm not sure, but that's kind of my regret, I guess. Because then this, it's so quick, isn't it? Just, they grow up, they go out, they're doing their own thing, and then suddenly you think, oh, yeah. Yeah, I think... um, Similar to Sheila, really. Um, obviously, I were a single mum with both boys. Um, similar situation. Um, but, you know, it's just... I wish I'd have treasured those moments more and not worried that I'd left pots on the kitchen side and not worried that school uniform weren't ironed or shoes weren't polished for Monday morning um, and just actually <laughs> treasured those moments of reading bedtime stories instead of rushing it through. Um, so... Yeah, I think there's a bit of a trend here, Um, (laughs) because I was also a a single mum. Brad and Tash were four and and six or something like that when uh, me and the dad split up, I can't remember. And um, I think, similar to these guys, that, you know, you sort of always look back and think, have I done everything? You know, have I been that mum and that dad and filled in all those gaps, you know, when there were times when dad was around so I think for me looking back I um, I wish that I'd have sort of invested a little bit more in how they was feeling rather than dealing with my own hurt and, and pain and things like that so. I think that they would they would probably say he did a really good job in a difficult situation though um, yeah um, so can we watch the video because she gives me food. Because she gives me food. <laughs> <laughs> the way to his heart. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a bit of a theme actually watching the videos too. I think there is a theme about food. Yeah. I think it's coming a few times. Uh, okay. So, <clears throat> okay, it's going to take a bit more of a spiritual route now. Um, in what ways have you been able to cultivate your relationship with God in the midst of, of the, you know, the business of being a mum? Okay. Um, yeah, because obviously it's really busy in our house and, you know, you sort of find that you're coming home from work, doing the tea, you know, seeing to the little ones and then it's bedtime and you sort of, it's very hard sometimes to sort of juggle all that and also my relationship with God. And I think one thing that, you know, is important that, churches our life is not just on a Sunday that we have to carry that through the whole week and um, you know sometimes I uh, often take myself upstairs for half an hour just to have that 
Nap. That, <laughs> yeah, nap. <laughs> to have that half an hour where I just, you know, sort of have by myself. And then I shut the door and lay on the bed. And then five minutes after, there's a little knock on the door and Tash will walk in. <laughs> You're right? Yeah. Lays at the side of me. And then five minutes after, and another knock on the door and it's Brad. All right. Yeah, he lays on the bed at the side of me. <laughs> Five minutes after, there's another knock on the door. It's Jasmine. You all right? Yeah, gets on the bed. And then same with Gabriella. A few minutes after, the dog walks in. <laughs> gets on the bed. He didn't ask if you are all right then. <laughs> rah, 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 rah. Yeah, get her up. Might as well. And then the cat will come in and get on the bed. <laughs> And then so James is downstairs <laughs> having a break. <laughs> While you're trying to free. <laughs> it is very hush. And then I'll shout James up, come on. <laughs> so you find that all eight of us are on the bed. <laughs> no, but seriously, you know, like I said, it's taking God into every situation. And being a mum when I have to be a mum and a wife when I have to be a wife and all those in between bits as well and uh, I think that's what God's been sort of doing through me that this is not just a Sunday thing it's not just when we need something but all the time having God in every situation even when it's crazy thanking God and making sure that those times you know because we can be in a room full of people and, and, and still know that we still can have that time with God so you know my kids are my life and James, <laughs> you know, so we have to make sure that we are continually in everything that we do, where we are, you know, making sure that we have good lives with Jesus. Yeah, I think um, for me, it's being inventive with time. So um, looking for that moment and actually accepting that you can't have a solid half an hour always and you can't always get to the end of the preach or you can't always get to the end of the chapter but grabbing them minutes when they come and and treasuring them um and not and i've just started a thing called one minute pause and um it's, it's linked to a book but it's starting that time when i know i've got sort of five minutes starting it with that because that one minute pause makes you just come really quickly into the presence of god and just sit in um, and just being creative so if I'm out in the car and Ada's asleep I've always got my bible and a book on the, on the passenger seat and I quite often will just sit on the drive and just read and pray because forget her out I know that time's gone then but I might get 10 minutes if, she's, if we're sat on the drive so it's just about being creative and as Sarah said bringing it into every area so while you're washing the pots praying and while you're hoovering up putting your worship on and um Audio Bible's great for just grabbing those moments while you're doing other stuff. Yeah, I always used to say that God spoke to me when I was washing the kitchen floor and I jolly well ought to wash it more often. Um, <laughs> <laughs> everything, everything that um, the girls have said is, is absolutely true. And I think I used to really feel so conscious and... Um, bad for not you know having a quiet time first thing in the morning and all of that you know it, it does it goes out it goes out the window as soon as the first one's born and you're on that four hourly cycle at the treadmill isn't it and it doesn't stop until they leave home at the age of 18 and you just keep on going um because <laughs> uh, the boys did need feeding every four hours until they were 18 i have to tell you <laughs> Yeah, I think my big breakthrough came listening to a speaker talking about prophetic lifestyle and how it is just knowing that Jesus is with you, you, you know, you, the continuously praying, um, the snatching the times. I think when, when the boys were little as well, but once they were at school, um, spending time with women at, from church, you know, we, we had a Friday ladies prayer meeting, we were, we were together for four hours often just in each other's company and God's company listening to what he was saying and yeah so having having that fellowship and that um stimulation I suppose and, and the challenge and um 
yeah, one of one of the later questions probably refers to that that point about spiritual mothers. The the people in that um, prayer meeting were my spiritual mothers. They taught me everything that I know about about praying and about digging in to God and a, and a relationship. Yeah. Yeah, that's brilliant. Brilliant. I mean, I think there's a lot actually in that for for everyone. It's not just. I mean, we're talking about mothers because it's Mother's Day, but actually, we all go through seasons, don't we, where life's just really busy. I know I do. I know sometimes I get to the end of the day and I think, for the I forgot to read my Bible and spend time with God. Uh, I think we all face that, don't we, at some point, uh, if not on a regular basis. And so I think it's good that good advice that to just try and bring God into the little moments in our day and also to get rid of that guilt, that burden you carry of, like, I should be doing better. Because actually life's not like that, isn't it? And um, not that we don't have principles that we work towards, but I don't think God's, God wants to beat us with a stick when, we, don't, when we, we can't match up to these perfect expectations in our, in our own minds. Um, he just wants to do life with us and walk, walk through life with us. That's great. Um, so uh, has there ever been, in fact, before we do that, can we watch another video? I love my mum because she cooks. She cooks. It's definitely a theme. Can we watch one more as well? I love my mum because she helps me with stuff. Oh, there we go. That's not, at least not cooking, yeah. Okay, so um, has there ever been like a, a, a difficult time? I know we've, we've probably touched on this a little bit already and things have been said, but a difficult time that you faced as a parent... And um, well, how do you respond to that? How did God help you through that? Yeah, um, for me, I think there's been lots of difficult times. So pinpointing one has been a bit of a challenge. Um, but I think throughout them all, it's standing on a promise or finding scripture that goes along with what you're facing and standing on that scripture um, and the most difficult time, I think, actually was um, I went through a season of not working and um, without going into detail, had no finance coming in at all. Um, and I'd often go to bed at night and nobody knew the dire situation other than two people that were praying it through. Um, and I'd go to bed at night and say, Lord, I've got no milk in the fridge and we can't do breakfast. And the next morning I'd get up and there'd either be money through the letterbox or there'd be milk on the door or there'd be nappies on the door. And um, there was nothing I could do to change that situation other than fully rely on God and absolutely just lay it at the cross and leave it there. Because I could have threat about it, I could have worried about it. And I did, don't get me wrong, I did. Um, I quite often rang people, the two people that knew, I rang them up, I don't know what I'm going to do. I've literally got nothing in the house. And I know for a fact it wasn't just those two people meeting that need. Um, at one point in that season, I had every single cupboard was empty and the fridge was empty. And it got to the point where I wouldn't let my mum and dad come in because I didn't know what want them to know. So I'd sort of I'd put stuff on credit cards so the fridge had got bits on in so that when mum and dad came round there was stuff in the house so because mum and dad were paying mortgage and rent and stuff as well so I couldn't ask them for more um, and this lady just came into church and she said God told me this morning I need to take you to do a month's shopping so I'm going to pick you up on Monday morning and take you to Aldi and that just blew me away because she didn't have a clue what was going on she didn't even really know me but she took me to Aldi and did a month's shopping. And I think that was the hardest time. But laying it just at the cross and leaving it there, not picking it back up and fretting and worrying and trying to work it out, just leaving it at the cross, I think, is the hardest thing I've been through. Yes, you might, you might think that being a single parent of a four-year-old, two-year-old, a nine-month-old would be the most challenging. But actually, the most challenging was six, actually six years ago this weekend when I went to see um, the middle one, Peter, who is 32 tomorrow, take his birthday present. I'd just finished working for Connection, so retired-ish, um, but taking a, a break from work. And I'd always struggled with my relationship with my daughter-in-law. And 
she misunderstood something that I said. It all blew out of proportion. She said, don't ever come here again and you'll never see your grandchildren. And blocked me on the phones, no contact. And I've only seen him once since then and that was to tell him that I was moving to Sheffield. Um, and it describes in the shack, doesn't it, about the greatest sadness. And I, for, for months, I just used to wake up in the night, you know, just grieving. Uh, and I just used to, to use tongues. Because I knew, I knew, obviously it's the devil, it's Satan. It's Satan trying to wreck families, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, just really digging in. But do you know what? My, my relationship with God was, and still is, so much different to, you know, if this hadn't have happened, I'd have just cruised along, you know. Um, and the following autumn was when I started, I joined with the Teesside School of Supernatural and did that for two years and learned so much about the depth of spiritual life that's available to us. So, yeah, I still don't see him, but I have, I have come to a place of just, this is the way it is for now. And God knows what's going to happen in the future. And there isn't a day when I don't think about and, and, and say, God bless them. Um, but it's ta it was a battle to, to get to that point of forgiveness and uh, being able to move on. Yeah, it's been, it has been hard. But yeah, but God. Yeah. Um, just going back to um, when me and my first husband um, separated, um, that was a really hard time for me. Um, just came out of the blue. I sort of kind of knew things were struggling for a while, but I really didn't expect my marriage to break down. You know, when I took my vows, you always automatically assume that it's going to be forever, which you do. So when it broke down, I really, really struggled with that. And my friend at the time, who isn't a Christian, um, she'd also, her marriage failed as well. And she kept on saying, just burn all these things, chuck it out, and all this, like, Y and Z. And, you know, I wasn't um, going along with, with, with God at the time. And, you know, like I said, I've been a Christian my whole life, but I did for a few years fall away. And um, so, obviously, trying to juggle being a single mum and getting over my feelings and all that kind of thing and trying to understand how, why, and all that kind of stuff. And... Um, I can remember um, my mum and dad coming to the church at the time and they said, Sarah, you need to come back to church. I'm like, oh, no, oh, no, I'm not listening about like that. Seriously, Bradley were into football and, you know, it were... And although I knew I needed to, I, did, I didn't kind of want to at the time. Um, but I knew through all the pain and all the hurt and everything that I went through, even though I wasn't having a relationship with God as I should, I still knew that he had his hand on me, even, you know, and it were always cries for help, Lord, please help, please help, and, you know, again, coming through it all, and I did eventually, obviously, come to this church, but God repaired something in me, he really did, I forgave very, very quickly, I moved on very, very quickly, and, you know, one thing that was so precious to me, I never denied Darren of seeing his kids, ever. And I never wanted, because of what had happened between us two, I never wanted that to have an effect on Brad and Tash. So I was very, very careful not to slag him off, to say things. By heck, I wanted to. I wanted to say some really nasty things. But I felt the hand of God on me, even through those times. Forgive and do not destroy the relationship between Brad and Tash and the dad at the time. And, you know, that was hard. But moving on, coming back to God, this church and the love that I have had in this church has been absolutely amazing. It's made me grow. It's made me realise, actually, I don't have done a bad, tash, bad job of bringing Brad and Tash up. You know, God saw the bigger picture. And just by being careful in my words, because there is power in words, and you've got to be careful what you speak out, like was mentioned this morning, I've had to be very, very careful, but God has healed, and he has repaired, and he has restored. You know, um, we are not the best friends, but, you know, we talk, there's no animosity there. You know, he comes to the house, see Brad and Tash, and we, we say hello, and, 
And that's how things are. But the biggest thing is, is protecting Brad and Tash through it all. But I got through that and I've seen the victory. And obviously married James and got a little family now. Went and downhill from there. <laughs> well. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's it. <laughs> let's watch a couple more videos, uh, Kezi. I love my mum because she always helps me and she's always there when I need it. She always lifts me up when it's hard and she's up. And she always knows what to say and what to do. I love my mum because she works hard. She works hard. <laughs> I watched it. There were two videos of, of Phoebe. One was her saying, no, no, I don't want to do it. And then that one. <laughs> so, I think, Phoebe, you were a bit like, I love my mum because <laughs> making me do this. <laughs> but you do love mum, don't you? Yeah. Good. Okay. Um, um, if we can answer this one, I've got one or two more I want to do in a bit that's probably ones I want to focus on. So just quickly, is there anything that you've had, you feel that you've had to work on in yourself as a mum? You know, is there anything that you've, you've had over the years that God's kind of brought out in you um, as a result of being a mum? Yeah, Sarah's perfect. I knew I wasn't perfect quite. I did have one issue. I've, I'd always been somebody for who things would build up and build up. And when I lost my temper, my goodness, did it go. And um, somebody else with a Vesuvius temper over there. Um, <laughs> and when I had these three small children, sometimes they really pressed my buttons. And there was a couple of times when I had a red miss moment and I thought, this isn't good. This actually is not good at all. Um, and I had prayer, would you believe? I had prayer and I've never lost my temper since. And sometimes I get really cross about not losing my temper because I really think I should be able to lose my temper here. <laughs> I mean, you know. Why so, am I so patient? Yes, I know. <laughs> I haven't quite completely buttoned the patience, but but not having that, not demonstrating that behaviour to my children was really important. So I just thank God that He did that for me. Um, I think for me, it's mum guilt. Um, I've had to really work on not feel guilty at every single thing. So they've not got the best trainers, or they've not got designer clothes or they've not got the latest Xbox or whatever um, and that guilt that sets in there I'm not doing a good enough job so I've had to really work on um, and hand it over to God over and over again that uh, and pray decisions through a lot more than um, what I used to so you know it's all right for him not to have that or it's all right that I've left him on the games for an hour while I've laid on the sofa because I can't be bothered <laughs> or we've had takeaway or McDonald's because I can't be bothered to cook um, but that would really eat at me initially because um, I felt I needed to be this perfect mum because particularly when I were on my own, everyone was watching. That's, that's kind of what was in my head. Everyone's watching, so we can't get McDonald's again because we had it three days ago um, and that sort of thing. <laughs> so I've had to really work on that. Um, yeah. How's you, Sarah? You're not that perfect. Come on. I'm perfect. No, I'm joking. <laughs> now, I can, I've got a gob when I want one. <laughs> And I mean, I've got a mouth when I want one, you know. And I think sometimes when I get riled, I can shout and they just disperse. <laughs> the kids just run for the hills. <laughs> no, I think for me, um, I think it's probably just not keeping my temper with the kids because it's not really them that annoy me. I think it's just other little situations that sometimes <laughs> just get me a little bit angry. And the kids find it hilarious. And I'm like shouting and bawling the like, Mom, have you seen how you stood? Have you seen what you're doing? And I'm like, I'm really angry. <laughs> no, I think for me, it's just trying to keep my temper. Not that I'm an angry person. Don't go around punching people or hitting anyone or anything like Not that. Not anymore. Not since only the counselling. Only when I'm driving. Only when I'm driving. No, but I think it's just making sure that obviously if me and James fall out or I'm angry with the kids, that you know we, we save it for later rather than... Um, just having an argument or something in the house. So trying to protect, especially the little ones. But yeah. That's it. All right, great. We've got another video, Kezia, to show. 
I love my mum because um, she always helps me with my homework. Oh, that's a good one. He's the brainy one. Helps me with my homework. Doesn't mind about the food. Get my homework done. <laughs> Okay, well, what we'll do is, we'll, I want to finish with this, we'll combine the, these last two together. Um, um, do or have you, have you had at some point a, what, we would, what you class as a spiritual mother uh, or spiritual parent that has helped you to grow uh, as a parent or as an individual, as a, as a, as a disciple of Christ? Uh, and also, how has being part of a church helped you and your family over the years? I'll go first on this one. Um, a few years ago, um, I was in a situation that I was really, really struggling with, um, and I really needed some solid advice, and um, so I'm going to pick on me, Julia. Um, yeah, I've always gone to um, Julie and Andrew, um, especially when I've gone through hard times, and uh, like I said, there was a, a situation a few years ago that I really, really struggled with. And um, I just knew by speaking to these two that they would give me the right advice because our mind and the situation wants to tell us to do opposite to what's right. So I've always viewed Julie as my spiritual mother because I've never judged. I was accepted. It was okay. They didn't just say, right, this is the right advice. Thanks for coming round. They prayed and invested and because of that investment has made me have a different outlook on how to deal with things. And um, it's not very often that I do go to her, but when I do, it is to get some solid advice. Because as she's been there, done that, bringing Europe. You know, I think she... <laughs> yeah, she's learned all the mistakes now. She's got past it all. So obviously, going to, to, to Julie and Andrew, they, they've always inputted and always encouraged and lifted me up. And again, with the church, you know, coming as a single mum all them years ago, I never felt like an outsider. The church embraced me with all the, what I call baggage at the time and everything that was going off. And the church has really helped me grow spiritually in every single area, being a good mum. The friendships that have been built up in this church have been amazing. You know, I've not had any bad experiences with anyone. And, you know, it's just been amazing to get involved and to see the church grow and just find friendship. And it's been amazing to sort of have that support. And I often say, you know, that church is my life. It's me, James and the kids and church and family. You know, it's not just somewhere I come on a Sunday. We are absolutely invested in this place and uh, always feel the love and, it, and it's great to be a part of something part of the vision and where it's going so thank you yeah so I had when I I mentioned before didn't I that the, the ladies that prayed um, and they were they were a big encouragement to me because um, their children were older so it's it's always you're looking to people who've, who've done it before aren't you um we, we set up a discipleship system in our, my last church, um, which was really helpful because it meant that I could, I could be mentored, if you like, by somebody who was doing what I was. So I had a lady that was um, very well developed in the prayer and prophetic, um, and I still keep in touch with her. She lives on Teesside, and she, she, doesn't, she doesn't speak so much into my life now, but I know she's always there if I, if I say, Jane, can you pray about that? You know, just see what God's, you feel God's saying about it. She'll, she's always there to encourage, which is great. But the, the great thing about the discipleship system was, of course, there was the opportunity for me to then disciple. So I had three young women who um, wanted to move more into what I was moved. So I was able to pass on to them and, and um, bless them, challenge them about their walk with Christ. Yeah, so that, that was really good. Yeah, I think um, I always say everybody is a mother to somebody. Um, and I think I were really blessed growing up. My mum and dad were brilliant. Um, but you always need that someone outside of that to go to ad for advice to. And um, consistently I've had Julie and Andrew as my spiritual parents um, since being 18. Probably before that a little bit. Um, but 
um, consistently, it's always been Julie and Andrew. But along the way, there's been other people. Um, so when I was going through a divorce, a lady who'd been through a divorce talked to me and she probably didn't even realise what she was inputting, but just talked to me and gave me little snippets of advice. Um, and when I moved to Bradford, there was another lady who'd been through her dad um, had had dementia, so she walked through that. So I think um, I remember Pete Smith saying to me um, a long, long time ago, to, to be a teacher of a level, you've got to be qualified to level above that. And basically what he was saying is to help someone and disciple someone through something, you've got to have been through it. Yeah. And um, so I think if you're going through something, I always tend to, well, God always puts someone there that's been through something similar or the same thing to help. But consistently, it's good to have someone there who knows you really well, who knows all your stuff um, to walk through it. And that's always been Julian Andrew. That's great. Yeah, that's brilliant. And, you know, I just want to say as well, it's, re you know, it's really nice that my folks will be able to support you. Um, you know, it has obviously left James and me and Michael as spiritual orphans. <laughs> because they've been so focused on you guys and, and all the mess <laughs> over here. But uh, we've, we've managed, we've coped all right, so thanks. <laughs> um, so I, we, we need to finish. I just want to, I want to just make some, I want to make some statements so that we're clear on a few things um, just as we finish. I want to make it clear that, you know, we are a church that celebrates family. So... Um, if, if you are here and you have young children and, you know, we, we do stuff for them with, with the kids' ministry and stuff, you also need to know that, that uh, we don't care about noise in this place. We don't care about kids making noise. It's called life. You know, this is, we don't, we've not created a doctor's waiting room here. It's not what this is. Um, you can get healed here, but it's not, it's not a waiting room. Um, so that's one thing I want to say. Also, I want to say as well, reiterate what's been said and what I said earlier on, that, um, that we, we believe that everyone is a spiritual mum uh, and a dad, if you're a dad as well, a spiritual dad. And I want to encourage you on that because I, 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 want to, I want to leave you with a challenge to say, be intentional about that. Yeah. Find someone. Find someone and invest in them. Find someone and love them. Find someone and like the, like the ladies have said, be that non-judgmental person in their life that they can go to consistently, be known fully. Because that's what, we, that's what we find real healing, when we are known. Not when we're perfect, when we're known. So become known by somebody and allow that person into your life and allow them to speak life and joy uh, into, your, into your life through that. Um, I think I'll leave it there. All right. So um, thanks for coming today. We're not going to finish with a song or anything. I um, just want to encourage you, if you want to give to, to support the church here, um, then you can do so. There's an offering bowl at the back. There's an envelope there. We give because we're grateful for what God's given to us and because we believe what God's doing here. Um, also, I want to just um, thank all you mums for doing a fantastic job. I want to mention if, 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 you're, if, you're, if you're a mum, if you're a foster mum, if you... Uh, <laughs> If you're in a situation um, like some of what we mentioned today where you don't see your kids, I want to just, just say God loves you, um, he wants to bless you, and you're very, you, all mums are welcome here, all mums, future mums, um, mums who have never been, you're all very welcome here, we love you to bits. Um, so are you saying Luke? No? no? You're nodding to someone to say something? No? I'd, I'd like just yes, to, I know, yeah. to say thank you to Luke actually. For me, it's really important that, you know, Christians, new Christians can come into a church and see us all squeaky clean on Sunday and think they've never had a problem, they've never had an issue, you know. And to have the opportunity, actually, to tell a bit of our backstory um, and to know what's made us who we are today, I think it's really important, so thank you. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's really interesting that you think that we think you're squeaky clean. <laughs> what I mean. Denial. It's not just a river in Egypt. Uh, 